So it is happening. There is a mistake in this picture. I will leave it up to you to see whether you know what it is, but Russia is now going to restrict uranium exports to the United States. So what is going on? The latest news is Russia throttling the export of enriched uranium to the United States of America. And you will win points if you recognize the mistake I made in the thumbnail, but you know, I'm trying to get more viewers, so sometimes I have to entice people to come and see. Now, in this video, we get to see why Russia is being targeted with sanctions. If you have been living under a rock, welcome. Your eyes are going to be opened. How much enriched uranium the U.S. imports, where uranium is enriched, and what the U.S. and EU partners are doing to reduce Russian low enriched uranium imports. So first, we open up the news. Russia places tit-for-tat ban on U.S. uranium exports. Russia has announced restrictions on exports of enriched uranium to the USA. The temporary ban is in response to U.S. restrictions on imports of, Ur of Russian uranium products, which came into force earlier this year. Now, the reason why this is happening I've made a map again. This is the map of all the nuclear sites in the United States, nuclear power reactors, I must say, but there's also a new uh, dimension to this whole map. But the whole problem is over here in Ukraine. I've highlighted Ukraine. It's not entirely Ukraine. I, I made it a little bit bigger. Sorry, Russia, if you don't believe that this is supposed to be Ukraine, but you know, this isn't supposed to be Russia either. And that's the impetus for all of this hullabaloo. Well, it's not hullabaloo. It's, it's actually really serious stuff that is going on. Uh, this is the cause for all this trouble in the world. Uh, this is the reason why the United States and European countries are imposing sanctions on Russia. They've invaded Ukraine. They did so in 2014. They did so again in 2022. This is a this is open war. Uh, Seven hundred thousand Russians have died so far, and God knows how many Ukrainians have died. So when we consider all of this, this is just an unmitigated disaster. And what did the international community? They said, "Well, we want to impose sanctions on Russia in order to force them to stop this senseless war." And one of the items that was on the list to be sanctioned was exports of uranium. So basically, Russia is no longer selling, or whether it is no longer selling. I mean, this is a very complex, uh, complex subject. But I believe that you, that the U.S. It has stopped importing uranium from Russia. That doesn't mean that it stopped importing enriched uranium from Russia. And this is one of those big things. So first, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration data, owners and operators of the U.S. nuclear power plants purchased a total of 51.6 million pounds uranium oxide of total deliveries from domestic and foreign suppliers. Most of this came from Canada, 27%, Australia, 22%, Kazakhstan, 22%, and Russian origin material accounted for 12 percent of total deliveries i've made another video uh, about a year ago about uh, about this very subject in which i explain you know how many separating work units are required how much russia does how much uh, all the other countries do uh, and, and that's something uh, you know you can you can find it i believe up here right so it, it, there should be a link to that video in your screen right now. Um, but what I want to show you, I mean, this is just uh, from the visual capitalist. Uh, this is, this is pretty, pretty good. This is good enough. So what you see is that Russia is uh, responsible for roughly 24% of all the low and rich uranium that is used in the United States these days. Uh, the United States itself is able to do 27%. The Netherlands is able to provide 9%, the United Kingdom 11%, and Germany 12%. And then there's other, which means China, because that's the only other country that does uranium enrichment, and that's not on the pie. 
uh, does 16%. Uh, I don't know what other countries would be in, uh, in, in, this, in this picture. So that's the question to why Russia is being targeted with sanctions. That's because of the war, how much enriched uranium the U.S. imports. And now we're going to look at where uranium is enriched. And for this, I made a map. I make a map for every, uh, every other uh, video that I make. And the reason why I do this is because I want to show how energy, you know, uh, that it that it is that it is a real and tangible subject that you can see on the map. Now, where is uranium enriched in the United States? There is a enrichment facility in New Mexico. Now we're going to zoom in Eunice. That's the uh, that's the town in New Mexico. That is uh, where where the enrichment facility of the United States is. Now the, the I don't know whether you can see this, but if I zoom in further and further, you can you can see all, all these white dots on, on on the countryside. That those are actually fracking wells. So I, I, I you should be able to see them now, right? All these square dots, all these square, though those are places where fracking wells are. That's where uh, the United States extracts their fracked oil and their fracked gas. I believe that with the new technology that they're going to use. Uh, they need less fracking wells over a horizontal surface, so maybe that's going to improve uh, the world. But I, if you simply looking at the scale, I can still see them over here. Um, I can still see them over here. Fracked gas is everywhere, and people people really do as if it's no big deal. But I do think that fracked gas is a big deal. Yes, we do need gas. I am willing to accept that uh, using gas is something that we, you know, it's unavoidable at this point if we want to make sure that we keep a prosperous society on Earth. But honestly, um, we need to start weaning ourselves off uh, fossil fuels. But Urenco USA uh, is not a big facility compared to other uh, enrichment facilities, which I'm going to show you. Usually these buildings, uh, I've been to one of these places in the Netherlands, um, what you have in these buildings, I believe that this is an enrichment. Uh, there are stacks of uh, centrifuges over here, probably over here and over here as well. Uh, so what happens is when you want to enrich uranium, you need to enrich uranium. Enrich, enriching means that you that you increase the the amount of uranium two thirty five in the fuel that you're going to put into the reactor. Usually, in natural uranium, uranium-235 content is 0.7%. But if you want to use it in a light water reactor, you want to actually extract electricity from that, you need 5%. So what you do is you put this, you, you basically, you turn, you do a chemical step in which you turn the uranium oxide into uranium hexafluoride. What happens with this uranium hexafluoride when it reaches a certain temperature, it becomes a gas. And once you have a gas, what you can do is you can use a centrifuge in order to make sure that the heavy stuff gets flung out before the lighter stuff gets flung out. Uranium-235 is slightly lighter, lighter than uranium-238. So when you stack all these centrifuges, one after another, after another, after another, what you get is uh, some of the uranium-238 falls over. Uh, you keep more uranium-235 in your mix each time you get into a new centrifuge, and that's how you enrich uranium up from 0.7% to 5%. So that's what happens here, Urenco use This is also an interesting uh, picture over here, because what you, what you see over here, these are the containers that are used to transport uranium hexafluoride and all of that is here i don't believe that there's any yellow cake in there i believe all of this is uranium hexafluoride now if we go if we zoom out because you know the world is a big place you can see all these blue things those are active nuclear reactors the yellow uh, place markers those are nuclear power plants that have been shut down some of these might get 
restarted in the future, the purple placeholders are placeholders where the United States is planning to build new power reactors. So there's, as you can see, I use the house icon over here. There's one other house icon in the United States, and that's down here in Oak Ridge. And Orano, which is a French company, uh, they are they have a permit to build a new enrichment facility somewhere over here. And I believe it's going to be on the site of Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee is very interesting because this is a place where they do a lot of experiments, nuclear experiments. They also build a lot of uh, test reactors in, in the past. And, and, and this is just an amazing and a big, a large space where a lot of nuclear activities go on. And I really hope that I can visit this place one day because this is an amazing, uh, amazing site. By the way, this is interesting. It's Palatian Neutron Source. This is something I would like to explain uh, one day, uh, but it's not today. So we are going to uh, zoom out uh, because we need to uh, check out all the other sites and, and basically, uh, if we go to Europe, we have two sites in the United Kingdom. I believe that this is the site where they produce MOX, that's Sellafield. And then we have Urenco, UK. Over here in France, MOX is made in La Hague. And uh, enrichment is being done over here, down in the south, in Tricastin. And then in the Netherlands, we have over here uh, Urenco. And uh, in Germany, Urenco, it's right across from the border. So let's take a look at a cellar field first. Cellar field is a quite, a quite a large facility. They used to be, I believe, three or four uh, nuclear power reactors over here. We have Calder Hall, we had wind scale. Uh, there were two other ones. Uh, I can't recall exactly what their name were. Uh, but in, in any case, so if you want to have mocks in the United Kingdom, I believe that they make mocks over here. This is really a big site where they uh, do a lot of nuclear research and nuclear chemi chemistry. Uh, but the real enrichment facility is uh, over here, Capenhurst, as you can see, right? This is a large facility, uh, again, with a lot of... Um, it's 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 not what you're used to if, you, if, you, if you're looking for nuclear facilities. These are just... Uh, large spaces they do have you know they, they, they do have some hardening and they have uh, additional levels of, of, of security uh, but generally these are just very large uh, factory halls basically uh, again over here uh, you see all of these stored canisters I believe all of that is depleted uranium um, you know these are the depleted uranium stores of the United Kingdom uh, these are, you know, the, these are tens of thousands of tons of, no, not tens of thousands of tons. Uh, I believe, it, well, maybe, maybe it's thousands of tons of uranium-238 that is stored in these uranium hexafluoride canisters that are over here. Now, if we zoom out, we go on to the Netherlands, right over here. Almelo, this is this is this is my country. I live in the Netherlands. We have a small uh, pressurized water reactor near Middleburg over here. Here in Almelo, that's the place where uh, the Dutch uranium facility is, the Dutch uranium enrichment facility. And I know that they are expanding currently. Uh, I believe that it is this building over here uh, that has been realized recently. How cute they are. they even in included solar panels. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been to this facility. I visited this facility. And the interesting bit is when you have all these uh, the, the centrifuges, these stacks of centrifuges, they're all connected with pipes. And these, these pipes are basically this big, right? They, they, they're like, they, they have a diameter of perhaps uh, seven or eight centimeters. And, and there is a pipe that has an arrow that says coming in. And then there's a pipe that has an arrow and it says coming out. And I asked the, the tour guide, I said, how many of these pipes do you have in this building? And then he says, well, for each of these, uh, these, these, uh, these, these, sit for each of these stacks, we have uh, one pipe going in and one pipe coming out, or two pipes. I believe it were two pipes. And then I and then I was 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 calculating. I said that this is probably enough for like 
20 or 25 gigawatts of, of nuclear power plants worth of uranium hexafluoride and rich uranium hexafluoride that that is that is moving towards the you know there, there is this they have these 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 filler bays where they, where you can put a you can put in one of these 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 uh, transport canisters and and it basically gets filled with the uranium hexafluoride and then uh, it, it it can get transported to whatever fuel assembly first you need to you need to reprocess it so you have to turn it from uh, uf6 to uh, some other form of uranium uh, probably an oxide again and, and then that gets pressed into fuel pellets and, and and this is a very interesting and a very big uh, facility this this facility over here uh, does somewhere in the order of 10 or 15 percent of all the enriched uranium on the planet so that's that's roughly i don't know it's it's, it's 60 gigawatts of nuclear power that 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 gets it, it, that gets its low enriched uranium from this one facility over here now if we zoom out and we go you know this is this is the netherlands over here is germany this is a place that is called Gronau. Over here, Urenko has another facility. Again, you see a lot of UF6 uh, canisters stored. Uh, this is a smaller facility than the one in the Netherlands. But still, you know, uh, this meant that the Germans could enrich their own fuel, which was, in the end, the mission of this, uh, this location over here. Now, I wonder whether they are going to close this down. I don't know uh, if there are any German... Uh, people watching these videos, I would really like to know what the plans are for Urenko and Kronau. In any case, uh, the Netherlands is expanding their capabilities. Now we go down to La Hague. Uh, this over here, again, a large nuclear uh, facility. I, I don't know if they do actual enrichment, but I do know that they do fuel fabrication here. So that's that's pretty interesting. This is where they uh, where everybody who uses MOX in their nuclear reactors. I know that our pressurized water reactor in the Netherlands uses MOX. Uh, they send their spent nuclear fuel to La Hague. Here it gets cut up, it gets reprocessed. So the uranium two thirty eight gets extracted, or the uranium gets extracted, the plutonium gets extracted, and then they mix it together again with, I believe, some 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 other. Um, feedstock that is needed to make sure that it actually uh, reaches the, the the correct amount of fissile material that you need to put it into the reactor that's what they do here very interesting site i've driven around it it takes you about a half hour to drive around it it's really big it's really big and what's interesting about france is down here down the south what you see is a large nuclear power plant and this is flamanville now, unfortunately they pixelize all their uh, nuclear power plants, nuclear facilities. Uh, but this over here is Flamanville 3, and it's now critical. Uh, I don't recall whether it actually started selling electricity onto the market, but it is critical. It has been fueled, and it, 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 it's about to start selling electricity onto the French market. It's, it's amazing. But the French also have their own uh, real uranium enrichment facility and that's down here in the, in the south so when we zoom out there there you can see Lyon over here is Marseille and it's about two-thirds down from Lyon to Marseille or three-quarters of the way there you have three cast tin and this again a very large nuclear facility uh, with all these buildings I believe that they do fuel fabrication here and enrichment um, let's see if we can we can see anything really it's it, it's quite hard um this this over here by the way is a giant switchyard as you can see the reason why they have a giant switchyard is because they also have four nuclear power plants on site so this is the only enrichment facility in the world where they which is 100 percent powered by nuclear power and, and this is very interesting I wonder if somebody could show me a solar power factory that is powered entirely by solar uh, PV panels. I don't think you can find it. The same, 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 same counts for wind turbines. Can you point to me? Can you point me to a facility where 
uh, a factory that is making components for a wind turbine actually gets powered by wind 100%, right? I don't think that it exists. Uh, but over here, uranium enrichment, I bet you that it is 100% powered by this nuclear power plant over here. Uh, it's four units, that's that's for sure. So we can see one, two, three, four containment domes. Um, maybe somewhere between three and four gigawatts, maybe even more, four and a half, I don't know, Trikastin. It's a big, big site. I know uh, I, I, when, whenever I go to, uh, to my, my fav favorite vacation spot, I always pass by Trikastin. So these are amazing places. Now, Russia, they produce almost half of all the uranium, the enriched uranium that is used in the world. And that's a big problem because uh, currently, if we look at all these facilities that I've highlighted in the United States, in France, in the Netherlands, Germany, and in the United Kingdom, uh, they, they, I mean, I believe that they don't get further than uh, 40%, 35% of all the enriched uranium in the world. Now, there are 450 uh, nuclear power plants in the world, uh, and the number is growing. Uh, the United States has 100 uh, nuclear power plants, and that number is growing as well. So the question is, uh, do we have enough? And I had this very interesting, um, very interesting <clears throat> factoid or, or uh, graph. This is from Orono USA. So they say the uranium enrichment challenge, right? Suppose that the United States is going to triple their capacity, their nuclear capacity. That means that they need to increase their uranium enrichment capabilities by 10 times. So today, the, Uni the United States needs about 50 million SWU, and SWU stands for a separative work unit. That's the amount of work you have to put into separating uranium to make sure that you get enough uranium-235 to power your light water reactors. And they need, oh, wait a second, you need, do you, today, the United States needs 50 million SWU, and their own capacity is four and a half million SWU. So you already need uh, tr three times as much SWU as you currently have. Luckily, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, France, and Germany, they produce low enriched uranium, which gets shipped to the United States. So we fill in a little bit of the gap, right? 2050, if the United States actually managed to triple its nuclear capacity, they would need 45 million SWU. So that's a huge, huge figure. And this means that all these facilities that I sh just showed you, especially the ones in the United States, New Mexico, uh, New Mexico can uh, be enlarged, uh, you know, if, if they want to enlarge. I mean, tripling or quadrupling the, uh, the capacity of Urenco uh, USA should be doable just on this site alone. Uh, should not be a problem. Um, Ukraine National Laboratory, what, what is possible here? I don't know. Um, uh, it's possible that they are going to try to build it over here somewhere, or perhaps over here somewhere, or or maybe they are going to clear cut a piece of forest and, and, and do something entirely new. Maybe it's going to be over here. I don't know. But we all, every every country needs to start increasing their enrichment capabilities if tripling nuclear capacity worldwide is the goal. Now, where does Russia achieve all of this? They have four enrichment sites. Um, this one is the one uh, in China that I could find. There should be one down here in the south as well, but I haven't found it. Let's zoom in. I mean, these these are these these are weird. Um, I believe that this is one of the enrichment sites. Uh, this is one of the smaller ones. It, it's it's near Tomsk. Let's see, what is it? No, Renza. Renza. Right. Uh, then there's one over here. Right. I mean, this is quite a large, uh, large place. The irony is that in Russia over here, you can see, again, the stacks of UF6 containers. So this clearly is a facility where nuclear... Uh, where uranium is being enriched. Uh, you can also see, I believe, these here again, switch yards, because they need loads and loads of power. 
Um, but it was one, and, and that was very particular, and I want to show you that because I, I prepared it. Tomsk, there it is, Tomsk. So over here, again, a large facility, right? I, I don't know where the U of 6 is stored. I, I, I couldn't find them quickly. Maybe I can find them if I take my time. But the, the irony here is that you can see they use a large, large coal-fired power plant in order to, to fuel whatever, whatever goes on on this uh, location over here. Ah, talking about U of 6 containers, where are the U of 6 containers stored? Well, it's over here. That's the telltale sign. If you want to know where uranium is enriched, look for these stacks. Look for canisters of U of 6. Uh, by the way, in the United States, they have Paducah, right? Let's go to Paducah over here. Uh, Tennessee, Paducah. Did I, did I, did I? Well, I can, I, can, I can find it right like that. Paducah, Kentucky, right? Oh, yeah, Kentucky. So over here, right, you can see thousands upon thousands of containers of U of 6 as well. Uh, there used to be a gaseous diffusion plant, so they used to be able to enrich uranium over here. I don't know if they still do it. But again, this is the telltale sign if you want to look for it. Well, right now you've seen them all. <laughs> so so basically there's there's nothing more for you to do. As you can see, they need a, a, a large amount of power. They have huge stacks of, 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 of transformers at this switchyard, which are needed to, you know, power all these 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 these, these factories. And you can see each building has its own switchyard, so they use massive amounts of power. You can also see cooling stacks over here. So all of the, all of the contraptions, all of the technology that are in these buildings need to be need to be cooled. So and and that's basically the story about low and rich uranium. Well, it's not the story, but it it, it gives you an idea. You know what shape and form it takes when we look at it from a satellite viewpoint. Now, what the US and EU partners are doing to reduce Russian LEU imports, already told you, Orono US is going to build a new enrichment plant. Urenco US is going to expand their uh, uranium enrichment capabilities. Uh, Orono and France is expanding their, is are expanding their uh, uranium enrichment facilities and the Netherlands, they are also expanding uranium enrichment capabilities. And with that, you've made it to the end of this video. I hope I wasn't too boring. Now, if you want to add something to the discussion, please leave a comment down below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already to this channel, please do so because it really helps. I'm planning to do a video each day in December. Now, if you want to uh, miss none of them, if you want to see them all, make sure that you that you click the notification bell in the subscription uh, button. Uh, if you haven't already, please take a look at my Patreon page. If you want to support the channel, it would help me keep the lights on. Now, thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.